dead studio audience. Which Mark is, killed him. I don't know why. Uh, anger. I have anger issues. Did you say death or death? Probably both. Both death and oh, okay. dead. They cannot hear and they are passed away. It was a massively... I thought you were going to say blind studio audience considering the topic. <laughs> that would actually make incredible amounts of sense. So, but, <laughs> right. so as usual, on the I'm... Me and Mike were hosting other dude in Big Black Hat Man. Y'all know that. You don't care. Uh, you yeah. want to know about our guest, who is uh, James. Hi, James. Yep. Hey, guys. Yeah, this is the man right here who not only runs Manic Expression, but combined the video and podcast sections so no one watches our show anymore. <laughs> it was Fusionator's idea. Oh, fuck him. <laughs> Watch him throw him under the bus. <laughs> throw somebody on like, Shit, here. <laughs> He said, and I quote, fuck the podcasters. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, that neck-bearded that's... son of a bitch. Yeah, you bastard. You Listen, you're, you're like, he's like, what, like 13? So we're going to go to his yeah. house and beat him up now. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Fusionators, horrible backstabbing aside. I uh, agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, today we're talking about... Uh, the TV, uh, the Netflix series, it's a TV series technically, but Daredevil. Marvel's yeah. Daredevil, which premiered on Netflix last Friday, so about 10 days ago. Yep. And the uh, dude and I have watched the whole series. James has watched uh, the first half of the series, and we're going to talk yeah. about our thoughts on it so far. So. Mm hmm. Yeah. And thank you for agreeing with me. <laughs> no, I'm just, I was b- bitter because James didn't finish that. It means we can't talk about like episodes 8 through 13. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, well, just warning too. We would probably we would probably spoil shit galore in this because yeah. Honestly, I don't feel like there's that big a twist. It's this is a very visual medium show, so yeah. yeah I'm have, I'm not really worried about like you know. I mean, I, I as much as the the show is great and everything, but I'm not expecting any kind of real twist that's going to make me go holy shit. You it know? turns out Daredevil was Captain America the entire time. <laughs> That turns I didn't out, see, but coming, but... <laughs> turns out he was an Irish hitman who gets killed and put in a box. Oh, wait, that's... Uh, yeah, different show, ha huh? make a different show, people don't... Oh, yeah, also, uh, if movie fans watching this, I have promised him not to call anyone on the site retarded again, so I won't call anyone on the site retarded again. Except for me, you can call me retarded, because I'm right Nah, I won't. Here. I don't care, you can call me retarded, it's fine. But, um, at any rate, so this series uh, is a sort of an experimentation by Marvel to put out a little more serious subject matter other than the sort of campy Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is a good yeah. series, but it's campy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Netflix allows it to be more, I mean, more violent. I don't know how campy that show is. I mean, the last episode I saw, some dude got shot in the head, and they showed the whole goddamn thing. Blood and guts and everything, so I'm just like... Yeah, mm-hmm. but was there a scene where the guy actually impaled his own face on a piece of wood? Oh, yeah. yeah, was, so. yeah. I'm going to say Daredevil would have a hard time playing on ABC like they would have yeah. time showing yeah. this. I think it could be like a 10 o'clock, like Hannibal, like a 10 o'clock maybe NBC show. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't think, yeah, even that, I mean, there's a lot of swearing in it too, though, so I don't yeah. know. I mean, the only thing they say is shit. They don't really swear excessively in it, so you could ease. I will say that bugs me a little bit. There were a couple times when somebody would say mother frickin', and I'd be like, really? <laughs> <laughs> you can say it. You're funny. Well, Especially the show where he had a guy decapitate a guy with a car. I mean, that's yeah. Yeah. The car door. Yeah, that's the, that's once you're there, like there's nothing more you can really do to make it any more extreme. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, the show. Let's talk yeah, about it. The show, okay. All right, the show. The story is: there's this kid. He had a bunch of turtles, and then <laughs> this ectoplasm and crap, I think like you're, cra- you're wrong show. Uh, ectoplasm crap uh, caused him to go blind, drop his turtles this, huh? into the go. sewer. <laughs> And then guess what? There's a guy named Stick who taught this rat how to kung fu fight. And that's why the rat's called Splinter. I yeah. think you're confused. <laughs> I'm like getting things. Michael Bay's turtles along with this show he, for some reason. You know, he's not that far off because technically the Ninja Turtles and Daredevil do share an origin. In chemical, the comics. Chemical spills, yeah. No, I mean, yeah. that's actually, it's supposed to be the same chemicals. Like, it bounces off Matt Murdock's head, breaks open, goes and knocks the, the turtles into the sewer... I mean, that's actually when the when they wrote the original comic book, they were riffing off Frank Miller's Daredevil run, and that was actually their insight. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, guess what? I'm right, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I, did, I did not know that. I, I 
was not aware that the same thing. I knew I knew that the the original Turtles was a riff on on Frank Miller's work on Batman and Daredevil, but I didn't realize it was that exact same thing. Yep. I mean, technically, because of legal reasons, they couldn't be too specific. But if you look at the yeah. comics, it's like this, it's the same moment. <laughs> yeah. That's actually kind of hilarious. Now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah. And then he crosses over with the Michael Bay turtles, and he beats the shit out of them all because he's Daredevil. Yeah, and they suck. <laughs> yeah, because they're like they're like seven feet tall. So I don't know. But anyway, that's like a different. Okay, movie. probably Will Smith could probably kick their ass. Yeah, we'll, we'll bash that movie some other day. Like some of the yeah. people just make fun of that off of the film, but we're going mm. back to Daredevil, which is awesome. I think everybody yeah. here can agree that this was a really awesome series. Yeah. yeah. The best superhero series of all time. That's live action. Easily. Easily. I'm, like, trying, not, I'm trying not to be that hyperbolic. I'm trying not to jump right to the, this is the best ever. Oh, yeah. let me do it then. Okay. Because Go ahead. I'm only halfway through, so I could I could change my mind. But I would say this is one of the best things Marvel has put out as far as their their cinematic universe. I'd put, I'd put this so far up with like Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Is one of the best things they've done. Yeah, yeah, it's it really is that good. And like I, I I've only seen it the once, of course. And I've only just watched it. I'm trying to be hyperbolic, but at the same time, I'm, I'm really tempted to go. Oh, this is just the best ever. Mm-hmm. I really am tempted to say that because it's just it's just the characters are interesting, the fights are interesting, the storyline is interesting. Everything yeah. about this just has depth and layers and Jesus, you know. It has everything you want, mm-hmm. and a bag of potato chips. Yeah. <laughs> I admit I was a little slow getting hooked into this, but by the second episode where they had the, the fight in the hall, the yeah. hall that was just so amazing. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm totally in now. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've heard everybody, the, the fact that it's all one shot and everything, that's what everybody talks about. But the thing that really impressed me about it was, you know, it doesn't, every every uh, superhero movie or whatever, whether it's DC, Marvel, anything, that you know, Dark Knight or whatever, the hero always, they punch somebody and instantly knock them out. And it's not that easy to knock someone out. And Daredevil, these guys just keep getting back up. It's like, yeah, he hit them hard, and they're like a little bit stunned, but they get back up, and he's got to do it again. And it just felt like that was that what that's what a real fight would look like. And then everybody gets mm-hmm. tired too, which I mean, I don't know if you've ever kind of been in a fight, but you wear out fast because you're, yeah. you're pumping so much adrenaline, you get tired, <coughs> and you see all these mm-hmm. guys that get tired, and by the end of the fight, they're all really slow. Yeah, they're definitely yeah. much slower than they were when it started. Indeed. They're all like a bunch of crippleds. It's just like, I can't walk anymore. Someone punch them for me. <laughs> when you get punched in the face enough, you really kind of feel like a cripple. Kind of yeah. Sucks. I have brain damage. And then like their uh, members, like, I don't kill anyone. And then it's just like, but everyone you punch to death have like chronic brain trauma they're gonna die anyway well i do love there's there is that moment in uh one of the episodes where the russian he says i don't kill people and the russian guy says what about the guy you put in a coma he's like yeah well i'll do that (laughs) (laughs) he's still breathing yeah he's still breathing i mean i just dropped a fire extinguisher on his head yeah (laughs) threw him off a roof (laughs) think of american psycho in that moment yeah yeah a little bit that was down down the stairwell and all. Yeah. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's get into the let's get into the characters a little bit. Uh, let's talk about Daredevil himself. Yeah. Matt Murdock. Matt Murdock, the man who's blind and yet could kick more ass than other people that could actually see. And another major role played by a British actor. God yeah. Damn it. <laughs> and a fucking limey pieces of shit. I mean. It's not like he talks with an accent, though. He does, he does a good job. Okay. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Never breaks out of his accent, unlike someone like Charlie Hannum or whatever his name is from Pacific Rim. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who, like, net... Australian guy to play an American and an American guy to play an Australian. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to think of the actor's name who plays Daredevil in this now, I guess. Dang it. I... Uh, Charlie Cox? Charlie yeah. Cox, yeah. yeah. But I, I, the only other thing I've seen him in is Boardwalk Empire, where he played the Irish uh, assassin. Mm-hmm. And he was good in that, and he's really good in this. So yeah, he is. He's an, actually an excellent actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like he's a tortured soul, yet has wit to him, and he's not a freaking psychopath. 
He won't like just murder the shit out of people. Yeah. Well, like, that's better than Ben Affleck. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean Ben Affleck. To be fair, the direction in that film was like, okay, the way I want you to portray a blind person, Ben, is to look like you're stone off your ass and don't know how to close your mouth. blind person is much better, especially one who can not actually see, but sort of see. Yeah. yeah. He's just like, he can't see. It just looks like everything's on fire. So, you know, as a, if he, I don't know how he, like, survived that as a kid because, yeah. like, you know, he sees everything on fire. He's like, oh, my God, people are dying everywhere. <laughs> Either that or they're all, like, fire people now. Trying to sacrifice me to the volcano god. No, he didn't. He's a, he's a fucking piece of shit. He owes me twenty. <laughs> so we, we agree that Cox is good in the, as the main yeah. character. Yeah. Also, he knows how to cry like a bitch in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, I didn't imagine him breaking down in tears. I was just like, Jesus Christ. I was like, damn, son. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would, I would like to see him. Uh, I mean, I've, I've heard some rumors. I doubt it's true, but I've heard some rumors of Daredevil popping up in uh, Captain America three. Yeah. And I don't think it's going to happen, but man, I would love to see it happen. I think he, yeah. I think he'd be great in tra- transitioning over into the movies. Yeah. Here's the thing, though, is like I, we don't I haven't seen him interact with anything other than like human beings. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, I don't know what the Black Sky Kid was, but um. That was confusing. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're going to explain it later, but that's besides the point. The point is just like, you know, just judging by the show, I don't think he'd do a good job against like a dude in an iron suit. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, they have made, a, I mean, I, I love the fact that the the very first episode, you know, the, the sort of the uh, criminal conglomerate that's behind everything is really taking off from the fact that New York was wrecked. In Avengers, yeah, that's their sort of starting point. Is so it is. He's living in that world. Yeah, you know, these guys. So yeah, but like, like you said, he like he like loses breath like any normal person in a fight. You know, blah blah blah. I mean, that's the thing. If they if they put him, for instance, in like Avengers three, it would be kind of weird to see him suddenly like doing backflips in space and yeah, <laughs> do that kind of thing. But I don't know. I'd still, I still. I hope by Avengers three that they they just bring everybody, like the, all the you know the the other Netflix shows that they'll get yeah. and Agents of Shield and all the movies and the Guardians of the Galaxy and everybody into that last movie. Yeah, we were talking about the. It was like I just remember we were supposed to talk about the other characters, right? Yeah, we're, we're gonna get into that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so let's talk about the most important character in this entire series, Foggy Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> Fulton Reed. Yeah, yeah. Man, I remember when I was a kid, I saw him in this movie called The Mighty, where he played like a giant um, kid with dyslexia <laughs> who like helped uh, Macaulay Culkin's brother walk until he died in the end of the movie. And now he's playing Foggy Nelson. Yeah, and I remember a lot less sadder role. <laughs> I remember playing Fulton Reed in uh, Mighty Ducks. So. Yeah, everyone knows him as Fulton Reed. He's probably like on set. It was like, hey, it's Fulton Reed. He's like, I'm not fucking Fulton Reed, god damn it. I'm Foggy Nelson. That's a much, much dumber name. Or no, I'm kidding. Go with his actual name, which I believe is Eldon something. Uh, yeah. I don't know. That's right. fine. The moment, though, the moment he won me over was uh, when Karen overhears him singing. And he comes yeah. out like, did you hear that? And she's like, no. And he said, the correct answer was yes, and you are fantastic. <laughs> he, that was the moment where I was like, I would fucking hang out with this guy. <laughs> yeah, he's such a... Yeah, you'd hang out with him, just get to Daredevil. Now, now where you are on the series, James, going through episode seven, I admit I wasn't like... I didn't think he was really necessary to the plot. Like, I felt like he was just sort of tertiary comic relief. Mm-hmm. But when you get back to the last couple episodes, he gets a lot more important. Yeah. yeah. I, I And I kind of... I mean, I... Imagine that he would, because where I where I left off was Karen had just brought him in to meet Ben Yurik. Yeah. Oh, so 
uh, I would imagine that he would get more important. But I mean, the, even the moment where, uh, you know, everything, the, the kingpin springs his trap and all the, the, uh, the Russians, uh, buildings start blowing up and the, the older, uh, client that they have, yeah. they're in the apartment and she gets injured and he steps up yeah. and, um, makes sure that she's okay. And not until you get to the hospital does he finally admit, oh yeah, I'm really hurt. <laughs> Yeah. So that, that, is a, that is a great great line. You're bleeding. Oh, that explains the pain. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god. He and um, uh, the, the female character who yeah. in the very first episode supposedly they accuse of killing her boss. Yeah. yeah she, uh, she, I'm so bad with names sometimes. I don't know why. You just said her name like five seconds ago. Did I? Karen no, Kate. no, James did. I meant, well, I, I wasn't listening, so there. <laughs> okay. Karen, yeah. Yeah, care. Yeah, she's a good character too. She is tough as nails, but at the same time, she's not like uber badass supreme. She's human like the rest of us. And they, they keep implying that she was in a porn of some type. Yeah. Well, in the comic, uh, she has a pretty sordid past. Oh, okay. Yeah. I haven't read any of the comics, so I don't. I'm not as familiar with the characters. I mean, I had to look a lot of characters up when I was while I was watching to see who they were in the Marvel universe. Yeah. I mean, Daredevil was when I was a kid. That was one of the big comics that I would read. Yes, yeah. so that was. I I I remember her. They they set her up to make her think that she had AIDS, but she didn't. And then, okay, <laughs> what? It's a dick move. Why would you do that? Oh, oh, the reason why, Mark, is that Walker Texas Ranger showed up and told her he she had AIDS. <laughs> Goddamn Walker, stick it back in here. I think she was a heroin addict at one point. What the fuck is up with her? She, yeah, she died. I think she killed herself in the comic. I mean, she was uh, really huh. a fucked up character in the comic. Now is the, oh. the nurse character played by Rosario Dawson? Is she from the comic, or is that? Yeah, she yeah. is. All right. In fact, she dates Luke Cage, which is another Netflix series. So yeah. there's going to be interlining, interlinking between everything. Yes. I, I guess I didn't look up to see what all Netflix series are doing. They're doing Luke Cage. What else are they doing? Uh, A.K.A. Jessica Jones and Iron Fist. And then teaming them all up together for their own The show. Defenders. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. Where they fight Kingpin and Hydra. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of which, we got to talk about the most important character, the greatest character in this series, Stick. She's just like going to keep keep running <laughs> everybody. Okay. Okay, anyway, Stick's such a good character. He's the old cranky mentor. And, like, you know, yeah. He's just like, okay, little kid, I'm going to beat the shit out of you, but you're going to learn something. All right, now let's talk about, like, uh, the most important character of the series. Um, Wilson Fisk. I was, God damn it, just go to Wilson Fisk. Stop screwing around. Anyway, the most important character is the that uh, Chinese lady. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, let's talk about Wilson Fisk, really a.k.a. Vincent D'Onofrio is a goddamn creeper. Yeah. Well, I, mean, Which, they, I, I thought as soon as they said Vincent D'Onofrio, like when as soon as I saw that, that headline where it's like he's going to be the kingpin, I thought, of course he is. Yeah. That makes so much sense. Yeah. He's, he's just like. He's you know, he's a really good actor, you know. Yeah. Just a great choice overall. Yeah. Yeah. He's also a giant cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> but I did think, uh, I mean, I, I've been really critical of, like, that's the big criticism I've had of the Marvel movies is that other than Loki, I don't think any of the villains in any of the movies have been really all that memorable. Okay, real fast, I, I would argue the ones in Winter Soldier. Yeah, but I... I and actually, Red Skull. I didn't even feel like uh, in Winter Soldier, one of the things I love about Winter Soldier is I didn't even feel like they were particularly villains. Like, Winter Soldier was brainwashed, and Robert Redford genuinely did think he was doing a good thing. A lot of villains feel that way. But that's besides the point. The point is, you yeah. know who also felt that way? Wilson Fisk. There you go. Boom. And, and the thing is, Wilson Fisk, I would say, I mean, he he was, I was so put off, like, in a good way, by the way, that, that he played him. He, was, he wasn't like I like Michael Clark, Clark Duncan in the movie. Yeah. It was just sort of like, you know, I'm a badass. He was just sort of like when he he asks that woman out in uh, one of the early episodes and he thinks he's been rejected and he gets embarrassed. He's like, yeah, OK, sorry, I'm, I'm going to go. OK, hey, have a good day. And he's just like, you know, another 
way that they could have taken it has just been like, no, I'm a, I'm the fucking kingpin. I'm going to yeah. tell you you're going out with me and you're going to go out with me. And Yeah, and it's like, all right, Superman's mom, go out, come out with me, damn it. <laughs> and the joke of that is, kids, is that the actress that plays uh, Vanessa, Kingpin's girlfriend, <laughs> is the played the mother of Cal El in Man of Steel. My God, I didn't even, I did not put that together. Yeah, and guess what? She's better in this and that movie because she's actually allowed to emote. <laughs> she's actually in this movie. She's only in that one for like five seconds. So. Yeah, I mean, she's too busy being in an actual good product. Anyway. I, but going back to Wilson Fisk, I like King that. Pitt. Yeah, they portray him as, as socially awkward. You know, he doesn't stare, look yeah. at people in the eye a lot of times. He's sort of just a very reserved person. Yeah. Until you fuck with them, and then he decapitates you with a car door. (laughs) But even that, I mean, it wasn't sort of, it was, you embarrassed me. Yeah. Like, it wasn't a business thing. It wasn't like, you know, it was, it was, he was so humiliated that, because and he's so, you know, I mean, he put himself out on a limb, which he doesn't do very often, and he got embarrassed, and he was like, someone's going to get their fucking head cut off now. Well, also, you could spin it as, like, you know, a guy went to a public place and said his name, like, out loud. Yeah, but I, if, if he had just been on his own, not on the date, I think he would have just said, hey, somebody else, this fucker out and shoot him. Also, well, later in the series, he was going to plan to kill him off anyway, so. Mm. That's but, besides the point. The point is, you don't fucking make Vincent D'Onofrio angry. I, I I just I thought he was I think he's great though I think he's second to Loki is my yeah. favorite in the in the Marvel Cinematic yeah sure is all a lot better than the cartoon version ha 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 oh man the cartoon version was uh, from the early time about the early Spider Man series the early nineties Spider Man the nineties one yeah. yeah he was sort of just a plot device like okay I'm here because I need to introduce said crisis of the week like that was his role pretty that. much and I, I mean, love it, that moment too, where they're on the date and she's talking about some other guy that she had dated, and he wore a white suit and an ascot, and he was like, "That's a, that's a weird look." His name that. too was Will, was Wilson Fisk, except he was like seven foot something and five hundred pounds of muscle. <laughs> it's fun, kind of hard to find a person who's in the, actually in those dimensions, so you know. Yeah, yeah. Unless if you want to like make a fat suit like the Nutty Professor. Yeah. You have, well, for, you have to settle for six three and probably two fifty. So yeah, well, I did think Michael Clark Duncan for what the movie was. I thought he was perfect as the yeah. king. But I mean, this is just so much. This is so deeper. It's just it, you get yeah. a feeling like this is a character. You, I felt bad for him. Yeah. Yeah, and you, well, you haven't even got to the back the, the backstory yet, which is I think episode eight or nine. I yeah. Can't remember. I'm assuming it's pretty close to the comic. So uh, uh, actually, it's actually slightly different. Really? Because I always, yeah, in the comic, yeah, he's a fat kid who got picked on all the time. So. Well, he's a fat kid that got picked on, but instead, like, in, like, his origin story, it was more like he was in a very abusive home. Mm-hmm. And, like, his dad was trying to, like, go into, like, yeah, okay, spoiler territory here for James. And since he doesn't care, I'm going to just spout okay. my mouth off. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, like, his dad was trying to go on the city council. That didn't pan out. He got, and he like borrowed money from the mob. And he was about to go to the mob, and then he slapped a Wilson Fisk's mom. Then Wilson Fisk grabbed a hammer and yeah. like bashed him in the head with it. That's pretty much the comic. And like, you know, vr, 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 and his mom helped him, like, you know, chop the body up and uh, throw, and throw it near a van down by the river. <laughs> but no, it's like, yeah, they. Yeah, it's pretty screwed up. Yeah. And also, you know the white painting he bought? Mm-hmm. It is symbolism because when he was a kid, his dad made him look at a wall when he got in trouble. Oh. And he's just like, look at this wall and think about what type of man you want to be. Huh. And like, yeah. Also, he makes omelets all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of it's because he's a routine person. I, I get the feeling because he's kind of psychologically damaged. He's not. He's not very good socially, and he's and he's sort of a little bit OCD. Yeah. Because when you look at his apartment, his apartment's really pristine and it's really square. He has yeah. A very square existence. He has a very controlled existence. He's 
developed for whatever reason a little yeah. obsessive compulsive. Yeah, man, he has a square body. <laughs> <laughs> Which fits. Maybe he secretly just wants to make everyone a square. I don't think that's it. I think you're making that up. No, I'm not. So now we're all kind of looking forward to these other Marvel Netflix series because this first one was so damn good. Yeah. So when we get Luke Cage and Iron Fist and Jessica Jones, we'll be, we'll be thrilled. Yeah. At first. <laughs> I mean, there's a chance that we get a little bit of a letdown because this first one was so damn good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's. I think it's going to be... I mean, the the good thing is the shows are, I mean, especially Jessica Jones is, I think, going to be really different. So it's not going to be trying to copy Daredevil. Whereas Iron Fist, like, there were a few times in the show when he was wearing the black mask where the silhouette looks a lot like Iron Fist. Mm. And so there were, and he, you know, I mean, he's a martial artist and everything, so you keep thinking, what well, looks, and I know, like, they did set up Iron Fist, too, like the... yeah. Uh, the ladies' heroin distribution company's got the Iron Fist logo on all the little heroin packets. It's uh, the uh, the something serpent, silver serpent, or something. Yeah. See, this is this is my problem not having the the, the comics background is I don't know any of this. So, I, yeah. Like when like, Gal walks off and says she's from farther away from China, I assume that she's actually not human, but I don't know that for sure. She's from another dimension or another like Chinese dimension called Chinatown. Yeah, where she meets uh, okay. meets uh, Jack Burton, and then they fight uh, <laughs> crime against David Lopan. Well, and you know they did. I mean, like they had uh, a character in there, the the accountant guy, who in the comic yeah. is called the Owl. Yeah, that's another character where it's like that's just stupid. <laughs> Actually, from what I gathered, is um, they're probably what they're going to do. Is since they reference his son throughout the entire goddamn show. Oh, his son will show up. Yeah. His show, son will probably be the actual owl. Because it won't be him. <laughs> yeah, it won't be him. He kind of, you know, okay, spoilers, James. He kind of gets thrown down an elevator shaft. Yeah. He kind of he kind of pokes the bear, and Wilson does what Wilson does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I kind of thought all those people, it, you know, there was the after they decided to get rid of the Russians and they had their little meeting. He's like. Okay, well, I'm, we're, we all knew we were going to have to get rid of the Russians, and you know, so now we're going to take their share and divide it equally among us. I was thinking, how stupid are you people that you actually trust this guy after after this? <laughs> you know. Um, well, the thing is, what happened was he got he was starting to like slip up a lot because he was getting into the relationship. So they planned to like murder his wife or his uh. They planned to murder Vanessa. And, like, it failed, and then once some fist found out about it and got pretty freaking mad, yeah. it was like, rah, 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 the exact dialogue. <laughs> that was pretty that when he gets mad. The guy's head off, so. Yeah. yeah. I, how many personal murders does he commit in this series? He commits a lot. Yeah, he kills the, kills the, the Russian, he kills... Yeah. Uh, I, I think of the, the There's one guy, the but they're not... Death. Yeah, I don't want to say that one. Yeah, that one's like, no he's one saw that coming. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he strangled someone to death, and that's funny. I don't want to say that one. Um, I, the, I, mean, I always put those three personally. I mean, you know, plus, of course, all the bombings and stuff. Yeah. The, There's a lot of the killing he does that's, like, very indirect. Mm-hmm. Well, like the detective that he gets yeah. killed. And, like, all the people he murders in the first episode. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I'm just saying, with his own bare hands, he does at least three that I can think of. Yeah. And then he, like, you know, fights a Daredevil. He kicks his ass the first time, but that's only because Daredevil fought a ninja and almost died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then at the, know it. Yeah, then at the end of the series, they show down, and it's a much different story. Yeah. And yeah, when, they, when they're fighting on equal terms, it's a little bit different. Yeah, to be fair, he like it was even because like, well, Daredevil was like you know hitting him more times when like Fisk like hit him, he was just like, oh shit, a fat dude hit me, and he gets thrown <laughs> to the side. He does, he does pick him up, clean above his head at one point. He does clean and jerk him and get him all the way up in the air. Yeah, yeah, he does because it's for him. He like flips him over his head, and it makes more sense if you watch a show. <laughs> Once again, it's visual. You have to watch it. You have to see yeah. the action scene. Yeah, yeah. And knowing uh, 
knowing the people on Man Expression, they won't watch it because it's not Doctor Who or MLP. <laughs> the bastards. There uh, is a villain, though. I'm wondering if you guys... I, I've heard this is a fan theory. I don't know if it's true, but in uh, the episode where he does... Uh, Kingpin has all the cops shot to set up Daredevil. Yeah. The sniper apparently is rumored to be Bullseye. Um, he's either Bullseye, but because he missed, people are assuming that he's like another character called Paladin. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it could be Bullseye. It could be Paladin. It could be da 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 low key. What? It probably depends on what they decide to write in the future. Who will be? I'll probably like ah, oh, that, that we don't really have anything to do with that character. Fuck him, he's nothing now. Yeah. I don't know. I I, uh, I don't know. With that big of an Easter egg, I don't think you could do that. No. Yeah. But also, I mean, there's a no, speaking of Easter eggs, there's an Easter egg that connects to Agents of Shield. The um, hmm. The uh, yeah. Jack. Jack Murdoch fighting Creel. Yeah. Yeah, the absorbing man who shows up in Agents of Shield. Oh my god, this is all connected. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the show, um, I, I don't know, do we have anything else we really want to talk about with the show now? That Batman vs. Superman trailer was a piece of shit. <laughs> Alright, we can, let's, let's talk about that real quick. Batman vs. Superman trailer. Ooh. And yeah, I know it's terrible. It looks bad. It does. It looks really bad. I was like, Holy shit, Ben Affleck is Batman. It looks really good that he opens his mouth. I'm just like, oh, God, his dialogue is going to be awful. <laughs> I'm James. not the biggest fan of Man of Steel. So yeah. this yeah. just looks like Man of Steel with Batman. It does. Yeah, Batman is just like, do you bleed? You will. <laughs> yeah, more sad Superman. That's all we needed was two more fucking hours of sad Superman. <laughs> Also, what's with, like, the whole, like, okay, I know, like, you know, Metropolis got destroyed and everything, but why does this shit look like Thunderdome now? (laughs) I mean, like, you know, I figured there's, like, a time skip. Yeah, society did not break down. Yeah, like, they're treating it like, you know, it's like Mad Max. I mean, ironically enough, it's the trailer's going to appear with Mad Max uh, Fury Road. But that's besides the point. The point is that... It's fucking dumb. It looks bad. Fuck you. <laughs> it looks like the, the whole armored suit thing that they stole from Dark Knight Returns looks stupid. I'm just, yeah. Uh, Actually, I like that. That was like one thing I liked. I thought that was because stupid. I like the I like the glowing white eyes. Yeah. And then I kept forgetting. It's just oh shit, I forgot. Wonder Woman and Aquaman show up sometime. Yeah, I think the fact that we didn't see even a glimpse of them in the trailer means that they're glorified cameos. Either that, or they're gonna fucking suck. You know, that's yeah. going to be a giant I mean, mess like, of a goddamn film. And it's yeah. just like, Aquaman's going to be like... And I, hey. well, am I the only one who... I heard Jesse Eisenberg's voice in the trailer, and I was like, yeah, I don't care if he shaved his head. He look, He's fucking Jesse Eisenberg. He's not Lex Luthor. He's the fucking kid from Social Network in Zombieland. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. He's just, I, just, I don't think there's any way to look forward to this film right now. I, in fact, I'm planning right now to not see it. I'm gonna see it eventually, but not opening. Yeah, I don't. I don't want and then, to like support. every single DC fanboy is just like, "This is gonna be the greatest shit of all time." Fuck you, Civil War. How dare you actually be a good film or a good build up? <laughs> Fuck you. Where's your fifty quadrillion characters? Oh shit, you do have them. Oh <laughs> what? They're developed. You faggots. Why don't you <laughs> fucking like do what we did and just show them? Have them show up, like first thing in there. <laughs> Fucking pieces of shit. Fuck you, Marvel. I just I just thought it was funny that two teasers came out this week. You know, we got the Star Wars one and, and yeah. the Batman Superman one. And one of them actually did the job of sort of getting you hyped for the film. The yeah, it one, did. Yeah, yeah, the Star Wars one actually makes you, you know, if you're nostalgic for Star Wars, like, oh, woo, you know. <laughs> yeah. Which is all I, teasers supposed to do? I'm one of the many, many, I, I will say this. Uh, proudly because I've seen many other people react the same way where I was kind of choked up by yeah. this trailer. Yeah, you oh, see Harrison right. Ford at the end. It's, it's hard not to get excited. When you, that's yeah. something that's yeah. very iconic for you. Yeah, everyone's like, man, Han Solo's old. He's not going to have the same swagger that he like says like three lines and you're like, oh, shit, he does. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Is I've, I've, Harrison Ford in the last like six years or so, like it's just, every movie he's in almost... He just kind of looks like he's sleepwalking through it. 
Yeah. And this one, in just that one line, I was like, oh, shit, he's trying. <laughs> <laughs> and Harrison Ford trying is a very good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe it's just that one line. They were like, oh, shit, this is the only line where we could actually get him to, to give a shit. So and that's the one they picked to go with for the trailer. But I just get this feeling like he's like he knows how important this is. He knows he can't just fuck it up. I wonder if he'll ever bring up the fact that he's like, okay, Chewie, I'm like 100 years old, and you're like older than me. How the fuck aren't you gray? And yeah, he looks like he's aging in re- Chewie. He looks like he's aging in reverse. Like he looks like yeah, he why? Looks why couldn't he have like a bald spot or something? It would be somewhat gray. Like I thought for sure, like Chewie would have some gray in his fur or something like that. Man, the guy underneath the Chewbacca fur, he's like 97 years old. I don't even know how he's standing up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. May- I've seen Mayhew. He's starting to look pretty old, too. So. Yeah. Well, he's only like, you know, he's a super tall guy, so they always look unhealthy. Yeah. Like, he's only 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to be, be in his 60s. He's got to be almost 70, doesn't he? Yeah, he's. I think he's like close to 70 or 70 already. All right, so anyway, wrapping up. So we all really like Daredevil. Everybody should yeah. watch it. If, if you don't watch it, you're missing out. Uh, all right, yeah. That's all we got. Anybody else? No, nothing? All right. Nothing? All right, screw it, screw it, then we're done. All right, have a good night. Bye, everybody.